Have you ever wondered how the heck statisticians can find the mean of an entire huge population based on an itty bitty sample taken from that population? Well, you've come to the right place because they do it with what's called a one sample t interval. Now, a one sample t interval is used to find a population mean. Now, real quick, why are we using t and not z? Because when we're doing these problems, the only standard deviation we know is that of our sample, not the population. So let's look at the four basic steps here. Step one, when you're conducting a one sample t interval to find a population mean, is to name the interval and specifically say what it is you're trying to find the population mean of. Step two is check those conditions for a t distribution to be built. Step three is to build the interval using this easy, awesome formula. X bar is the statistic sample mean from our sample. T star is our critical value for based on how confident we want to be to determine how far we're willing to reach to create our interval. And then the S divided by the square root of N is the standard error of our sampling distribution. Now I want to make a huge important comment right now. If for some reason you happen to know the standard deviation of the population sigma, by all means, use that instead of S. And if you do know the standard deviation of your population, you could actually use a Z interval for a population mean and not a T interval. But William Gossett, who invented the T intervals and the T distributions, found out that when you're using the standard deviation of a sample, T intervals are just a little bit better at making predictions than normal models. But again, I don't want to ignore the fact that if you happen to know sigma, the standard deviation of your population, you could use it instead of S, and that would actually be a Z interval. But in most cases, i got to be honest, that would be really hard to ever know. All right, that's the interval. That's how simple it is. Step four is interpreting the interval, and this is where you say I'm 95% confident that, and then you basically state what you found in your interval. Let's look at those conditions very briefly, because this is really important. Those conditions are something you don't want to overlook. First condition is pretty simple. The sample has to be random to avoid bias. Second condition is the sample size must be less than 10% of the population to assume independence. And the third is that the sample needs to be big enough to use that T distribution. Now, there's three different ways that you could be big enough. One, if the population is known to be normal, then the T model is safe to use under any sample size. Even a sample size of one, two, three, four, five, doesn't matter. Then we have the central limit theorem, CLT. That says that if your sample is 30 or larger, a T model is also always safe to use, and you don't even have to care if the population is normal or skewed or simply not normal. So the population doesn't even matter if your sample size is 30 or larger. The sampling distribution is guaranteed by the central limit theorem to follow that normal T distribution. Now, if the population is unknown and the sample size is less than 30, then it can still be safe to use a T model as long as you check your data and you make sure that it's free of major skewness and any major outliers. If that's true, then you're still fine to use the T model. All right, let's look at an example that we're going to use here to walk you through a one sample T interval. What is the mean amount of time a name brand AAA battery lasts? I mean, there's got to be millions, maybe even billions of AAA batteries out there. What is the mean time that one specific brand lasts? So to find out, Becky selects a random sample of 55 name brand AAA batteries and runs them each in a flashlight until the flashlight no longer operates. She records the time. Each of the 55 batteries lasted and then calculates the mean and the standard deviation of her sample. Now, here come some important numbers I'm going to need. The mean of her sample was 34.7 minutes. The standard deviation of her sample was 23.8. And we're asked to construct a 99% confidence interval. Those are really the only three numbers you're going to need to do this. All right. Step one, naming it and telling me exactly what you're using. This is a one sample T interval for a population mean, but now we got to give some more specifics. The mean amount of time in minutes that all brand name AAA batteries will last in the mentioned flashlight. All right. Moving on to step two, checking those conditions. The sample of 55 batteries was said to be randomly selected to avoid bias. I'm assuming that this particular name brand, maybe D Duracell, Energizer, pretty confident that 55 is less than 10% of all of them to assume independence. 
And well, it never said anything about the population being normal. I don't know, maybe um, the, li the life of all batteries is actually skewed left where most of them last a while, very few last little. Who knows, but none of that even matters because the central limit theorem kicks in when my sample size is 30 or larger. So even though I don't know the population shape, I do know that my sample size is larger than 30 at 55. So a T distribution with 54 degrees of freedom can be used. Now, if you haven't learned more about the T distribution, I got several other videos that can help you. But basically, the T distributions are based on what's called degrees of freedom, which is simply your sample size minus one when you're working with one sample. All right, step three is the really easy and fun step. This is when we're going to take our sample statistic. In this case, that is the sample mean of our sample. That was the 34.7 minutes. Then we're going to multiply that, or excuse me, not multiply, we're going to add and subtract that by what's called the margin of error. This entire back part here is the margin of error. The first is the critical value. This is entirely based on how confident you want to be. To get that critical value, I need invert T on my calculator, or you could use those T tables if you know how to use them. So going and grabbing invert T by hitting second vars. The area at once is the area at the bottom, so you got to be a little bit careful here. We want to be 99% confident. That's 99% of samples in the middle. That leaves 1% of samples left out. And this wants the area at the bottom. So again, if there's 1% left out due to symmetry, that's half a percent at the top and a half a percent at the bottom. So a half a percent as a decimal is 0 0.005. And then again, because William Gossett made several different T distributions based on the degrees of freedom, we do need to put in there the 54 degrees of freedom. This is going to give us that T star that we need. In this case, I rounded that to 2.6700. All right, now for the standard error. The standard error is simply this back part here. And the standard error is taking the standard deviation of our sample, that is the 23.8, divided by the square root of 55. I want to mention this one more time. If for some reason the problem told us that we knew the standard deviation of all batteries for this name brand company, we should be using that instead of S. And in that case, we could actually use a Z interval and not use T at all. All right. Multiply all of that together back there. You could do that in one big swoop on your calculator. I got 8.569. Add it to get the top, subtract it to get the bottom, and we get this beautiful interval. Now we're ready to give our estimate here, or our final interpretation, excuse me. I'm 99% confident that the population mean time that a name brand AAA Bradley will last in the flashlight mentioned is between 340.13 minutes and 357.27 minutes. Keep in mind here that we want to start off with our level of confidence and we want to make sure that we're searching for the population mean. Sometimes students will put population um, or sample mean there. And no, the sample mean we already know. Like the sample mean is something that we 100% know. It came from our data. But a confidence interval is not used to find a sample mean. It's used to estimate a population mean. So make sure you keep the proper wording there. All right, now here's the best part. Your calculator is fully capable of doing all of this. All you have to do is know how to use it. Now, again, the calculator comes in handy for checking work. It also comes in handy for multiple choice questions, but I would not recommend using it to show work because it can't show the work on an FRQ. All right, to do this, we're going to hit second, or excuse me, not second. We're just going to hit stat, slide over to stat, and now we're going to look at options seven and eight, Z interval or T interval. Now, obviously, this is a T interval, but I'm going to say for the third time, if you are working with the standard deviation of the entire population, if for some reason you know that, then that's what the Z interval would be for. But here we're using a T interval. All right. Now, there's a cool thing here. You could select the input. You can either put the data in, which I'll talk about in a second. But for the problem that I just did, we have the stats. Whoops, sorry about that. Oh, I was hitting the wrong buttons left and right there. So for the uh, for this particular problem, I don't have the data. I don't know the actual lengths of time that all 55 batteries lasted. All I have is the stats. Those are the statistics from the sample. So move over and select stats. Here we're going to type in the mean. Now I got to go back and get the information from our problem here real quick. Remember, our mean was 348.7. And then we need the standard deviation of our sample S. That was the, boy, I have a bad memory here, 23.8. And then we need our sample size, in that case is 55, and our level of confidence, 0 0.99. Then all you got to do, oh, not 0 0.999, 0 0.99. Sorry about that. Very sensitive calculator here. All right, hit enter, and boom, there is the interval. By the way, look how close that interval is to exactly what we got. 
Might be off a couple decimals here and there, but that's because the calculator is not doing any rounding. Now, really quickly here, let me go back and show you what it means if you have the data. So if we go back to that T interval, notice that you could also select data. So imagine that you simply had the data, like all you had in front of you was the 55 times. Well, what you would actually do is go to stat, go to edit and create a list. And in that list would be all of the individual times for the 55 individual batteries. So imagine if I entered that data there, then when I go to run the test, I'm actually going to tell the calculator, use the data that's in list one. That way the calculator is going to find the mean and the standard deviation for you. Pretty cool. But I will say in most cases, especially when you're working on the AP stats test, they're going to give you the statistics that you need. So I would slide over and use the stats using the X bar and the S that's given to you in the problem. All right, that is it. That is how simple it is to conduct a one sample T interval for a population mean. All right, hopefully you can rock it and any problem like this is really easy. Enjoy.